Hello and welcome to Always Bore and Never Boring. As you may be aware, a few months back, I reviewed a wonderful game from Midland Miniatures called Stalagbite. If you missed that review, I do recommend checking it out, because Stalagbite is one of my current frontrunners for Game of the Year 2024. I think it's superb. Not only is it a great experience with incredibly engaging rules and smooth gameplay that always makes you want to play just one more time, it is also very nicely presented. It has beautiful cards and tiles with a cartoony style that brings the adventure to life, and jolly custom meeples for the brave dwarves and their many nefarious foes. But I know that when I reviewed the game, some people were interested in the idea of replacing those meeples with miniatures. Well, guess what? You can. And I am lucky enough to have received a review set of all 30 of the official Stalagbite miniatures to show you. Now admittedly, I was planning to get these all painted before making a video about them, but I just couldn't resist showing them off early. And at least this way you will get to see how clean these miniatures are straight out of the packaging. As I mentioned, this is the complete collection, but you can also purchase individual sets. So if you have your own dwarves and goblins already, you can just buy these specialist enemies like the Stalagbites. Each set is hand sculpted and cast in metal and comes with 25mm plastic slotter bases. In terms of scale, I think we are looking at around 28 to 30 millimeters, but it's all dwarves, goblins, and weird cave beasties anyway, so who knows for sure. There's a bag of stalagbites, the poster children for the game, our goblins, the baddies that hunt our dwarves down, some creeping jeepers, these are gross worms that you really don't want to meet in a dark tunnel somewhere, then we have our dwarves, these six brave heroes who are going to venture into these deadly caverns. And then the Red Hook Horrors, which look a bit like they have dragged themselves in from a Resident Evil game. Let's take a closer look at the Stalagbites first. It seems only right and proper. You get seven regular sized Stalagbites, one of which you are supposed to paint gold. And then you get one supersized Rank 2 Stalagbite. These were sculpted by Paul from Midland Miniatures, and it may not be easy to tell, but every one of these beauties is unique. I think they are great, they have loads of character in their faces, and they should be pretty easy to paint up. Next are the Creeping Jeepers, also sculpted by Paul. These more powerful enemies appear in smaller quantities, so you just get three of the regular ones and then one large rank 2 one. Again, they are all different. They are like big lung worms or something. I kind of hate them and their little horrible flappy bits, but in a good way. Paul's last contribution to the range is the set of four Red Hook Horrors, and these are also surprisingly unpleasant creatures, almost like an amalgam of bone, beaks, intestines, and rock. They have a cool sense of motion about them. You can imagine them waving to and fro, patiently lurking in the dark caverns for something to stray too close before writhing into a natural action to strike mercilessly. The Rank 2 one really stands out from the rest, thanks to its larger size and its two beaked heads. All of the enemies we have seen so far are denizens of the caverns the dwarves are exploring, but the dwarves are also being chased by goblins. You get seven of them, although hopefully you will never have to deal with that many all at once. These were sculpted by Kev Adams, the Goblin Master, and they are lovely. They have a really cool old hammer vibe to them that I like a lot. And they have so much personality. Some of them may look quite similar in appearance, but they are all different, although all equally ferocious. You will notice that each of them has a clenched left hand. That's because you also get a set of metal shields to use with them. The seven goblins are the soldiers, the hunters. But watch out, because the sneakiest goblin of all is the lurker. This is a fabulous piece, a goblin who really puts the dagger in cloak and dagger. He is very unpleasant when you encounter him in the caverns, and this miniature does him justice. With enemies like this, you will need friends, and our final miniatures are the six dwarf heroes, the player characters. These were all sculpted by Martin Baker. I like these a lot. They don't have dynamic poses or anything, but they have lovely detail and a quaint, dainty style that works really well for this game. I never did think the dwarves of Stalagbite were the big macho type you see running around Games Workshop games. Of the six sculpts, three are male and three are female, and they are all different, even though they are all armed with axes and shields. When I paint them, I am going to make sure I colour the rims of their bases to match the six colours of the character cards and dice in the game, just to avoid any confusion. And that is it, that's all the miniatures. I think they are fantastic. To be honest, I was quite happy with the meeples that came with Stalagbite. 
and buying replacement miniatures is quite an expensive endeavour. But I am a miniatures guy, so having these fills me with a kind of simple joy, and I cannot wait to get them all painted up. Please note, these official miniatures along with the Stalagbite game are available right now from the Midland Miniatures website where you can get the full mini set at a discount price. Additionally, I have it on good authority that the game will be available to purchase at Tabletop Scotland which runs from the 6th to the 8th of September 2024. If you're heading that way, you might want to see if you can hunt the game down for a closer look. But that is it from me for now. Sorry, today's video is a bit of a short one, but I can assure you I am far from slacking off and there is lots of exciting stuff in the pipeline. For now, if you like the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.